Good afternoon, everyone. Absolutely delighted to be here. Um, Premier, Cabinet colleagues, uh, colleagues, uh, permanent secretaries, press, friends, friends in the press. <laughs> it's important to have, we all know. So, uh, I can assure you we have a whole host of policy initiatives in the Ministry of Legal Affairs um, that uh, we're cracking on with, and I've been cracking on with for the last while. The two that were raised in the uh, throne speech today are a couple of, of significant ones. They're all significant, but the, these two that were mentioned. The one relates to the significant challenges uh, that we've had with regards to um, the commission of crimes and those that are mentally Ill. Ill. I once had a colleague that quipped to me, you know, Mark, uh, people that are mentally well don't commit crimes. And there's an argument to be had there, but the fact of the matter is that we do have people that are involved in the commission of crimes that clearly are, are mentally ill and diagnosed as such. So we need to uh, break out of the revolving door that we have with regard to Bermudians repeatedly entering and exiting the criminal justice system uh, who are mentally ill, which is damaging to both them and there's clear risks to the society with regard to these types of cases. Uh, such persons present a unique judicial challenge with profound human rights dimensions attached to their cases. Uh, it is incumbent upon us that we put a legislative framework in place to ensure that they're dealt with appropriately by the judicial system. The fact of the matter is our Mental Health Act dates back to 1968 and we've been rife with problems with it um, in, the, uh, in the judicial and the court system and we must address that. So during this session we're going to assess the feasibility of a specialized court to deal with the judicial challenges presented by the mentally ill along the lines of a, uh, the drug court that we have now and the, and the, and the family court. And um, the legislator will be invited to consider the following adjustments to the amendments to the Mental Health Act, amendments to the Magistrates Court Act, um, which legislates uh, the creation of the Mental Health Treatment Special Court, and amendments to the Criminal Code as far as the appropriate disposition with regard to those that are, are mentally ill or deemed to be mentally ill is very, very key. And we just don't have the facility, I mean, we haven't had it for years to appropriately deal with a number of people that are deemed to be mentally ill that commit criminal offenses. Um, and sometimes it doesn't mean that they're not necessarily going to, that they, because they're mentally ill, they don't have to face uh, the criminal system, but it does mean that they may have to face the criminal system and get the appropriate help and the appropriate treatment so they don't fall into that revolving door uh, situation. So we're going, to, uh, we're going to be addressing that with a full vigor. Uh, the other issue we heard about relates to uh, prioritizing the containment of legal aid. The fact of the matter is that legal aid has escalated by 130% over the last few years. I'm sure that wouldn't surprise you because crimes escalated over the last few years by 135% um, at last check. So it probably comes to no surprise that we're in that position. But we have to keep this in check. Uh, we certainly have a view that with regard to the bringing forward of, of legislation to address crime, which is what we're going to be doing with full vigor, we're going to have to, I'm a big fan of keeping the fact that things have to be balanced, that's the whole scale of justice and keeping the balance, that people have to have the right to be represented and have to have the right to, to seek out attorneys. There are people that are, get into the criminal justice system that are actually innocent and have to be uh, defended properly. The whole thing has to, uh, to work properly. Now, having said that, uh, we can't carry on in the current climate with regard to this type of uh, escalation of the uh, amount that the legal aid scheme is having to put out on an annual basis. So one of the initiatives that's going to be in place is going to be that legal aid, um, we're going to be open for discussion, is that legal aid is going to remove all non-criminal proceedings from eligibility for legal assistance. That will mean that if you've got, you know, a dispute with your, your neighbor over something, um, you know, in, 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 uh, or in contract, you're not necessarily be able to go along and have the public purse fund your uh, legal argument. Um, those things invite costs in the event. Or if you've got an acrimonious divorce, um, it may not be that you're going to be able to go along and have the uh, legal aid scheme fund that. Now, that's not going to be a closed category because there are going to be exceptions to that that would entail a uh, position to be looked at if you had a situation involving children and so on and so forth. So like with anything, we're not closing it down, but we have to start to uh, confine that. So within that, I anticipate that we're going to bring along further amendments uh, to the Legal Aid Act uh, with regard to a, a stricter approach and perhaps look along the lines of the way that other jurisdictions have had to approach it now that have had the same issues. 
Thank you very much.